Let's look at some different methods of adding sound to our MFC projects. The first method we'll examine is also the easiest, and that's calling the play sound function. To do this, right-click the project and select Properties. Go to Configuration Properties, Linker, Input, and in the box labeled Additional Dependencies, add winmm.lib. Next, include the file mmsystem and globals. Simply include mmsystem.h. Third, call the method play sound, pass it in the name of the file, null, sound file name to specify the sound file's name, and one of several flags such as asynchronous, synchronous, or loop. For example, some play sound flags you can use are sound asynchronous, which returns immediately, sound sync, which returns only after the sound finishes playing, sound loop, which loops the sound, and sound purge, which stops playing the sound. Note, there are certain limitations imposed when using the play sound method. First, it plays only WAV files. It cannot be used to play compressed audio formats like MP3s. Second, it can only play one WAV file at a time. First thing we need to do if we're going to use the play sound method is go to our project, right click, properties, and I want to go down to the linker section here and input. And under the category additional dependencies, I need to add the library winmm.lib. Once I've done that, the next thing I need to do is in my global somewhere, I need to add the header file mmsystem.h. So I'm including that here. And once I've done that, I'm all set. And all I have to do is call play sound. This is probably one of the easiest methods of adding sound to an MFC project. So over here in my interface file, I'm just going to call the play sound method, and here's the path to the directory and the wave file. And remember that you know it can only play one wave at a time, and it has to be a wave file. It can't be compressed audio formats like MP3 or you know something like that. But to take a look at it here and here. The next method we'll examine of adding sound to an MFC project is the use of MCI commands. Using MCI commands offers several advantages over implementing play sound. First, with MCI commands, you can play compressed audio formats like MP3s and even video files like MP4s. Second, you can play more than one file simultaneously. To do this, we need to right-click the project, select Properties, go to Configuration Properties, Linker, Input, and in the box labeled Additional Dependencies, add winmm.lib just like we did with PlaySound. Also, just like we did with PlaySound, we need to include the file mmsystem.h as a header file. All that remains now are to create command strings, kind of like SQL strings, and call the method MCI send string. Here are two C strings, one's the directory and one's the file. The third C string I'm instantiating, I'm going to create a text-based command, open, and then I pass in the directory and the file, and then type MPEG video alias since it's an MP3 file, and then the alias, which is just the file name. I then take that whole string after it's been concatenated together and I pass it in as an argument to MCI send string with null and zero zero. This will open and load the file. Then to play it, I do the same thing. I take another C string and I build it this time with the command play and I pass it to MCI send string. Here are some examples of other MCI commands in the form of a C string. In this example, the part in purple is the actual MCI command. Here are examples for stop, pause, and resume. Here's another example of closing a file with an MCI command. In this next example to use MCI commands, once again, we want to go into our project properties, linker, input, additional dependencies, and if we haven't already added it, add winmm.lib. Next, in globals, we need to include the file mmsystem.h. Then we're almost ready. Once we do that, I've created a function here, and it's just called play.func, and it takes a cstring argument and another cstring argument. One's the file name, one is the command that you wish to execute. And all it does is simply build MCI commands in these if blocks here. Okay, so the one we're going to make use of right here is play, which is just going to open the file for an mp3 and then it's going to play the file. Okay, so that's all the function definition does of play.func. Now we're going to invoke or call play.func in the message, uh, message handler for the start button. So in this case I'm going to comment out my call to play sound and we're going to call play.func twice. And just to illustrate that not only can we play mp3s but, but that we can play waves and that we can play two files simultaneously 
I'm going to place two calls uh, to play that funk with my MCI commands. So we'll build the project and then run it. Okay, so let's run it. And when I click the start button, that's the method in the event to trigger the sounds to play with the MCI commands. Notice it's playing two sounds simultaneously at once, and also it's playing an MP3 and a wave. Once again, take note that MCI commands forego many of the limitations incurred by using play sounds. For example, they can play compressed audio formats like MP3s as well as video content, and they can play more than one sound simultaneously. We'll cover yet a third method as well, and that's placing a call to the system command. You can use the system command and start to play a media file from an MFC application. When done this way, whatever application is associated with that file type in the Windows environment will be called to open the media file, usually media player. For example, system start sounds drifter mp3 or system start movies Totoro AVI would play that mp3 or that movie respectively. In this last method, I'm just going to use or place a call to the system command. So we're not going to use play sound and we're not going to use MCI commands, but instead we'll place a call to system. And in this case, I'm going to use the method start and this will just pick up whatever our file type association is. So if I use the path sounds um, drifters.wave, all right, that'll open up Media Player and play the sound. Which you know that works if you don't mind the fact that you know other programs are opening up in addition to your program. Sometimes that might be what you want. But let's build that and test it. Okay, so in this case, Media Player is taking care of playing the file, and I can still go through the program. 